Amazing. All right. Everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today. Hey, hi, David. Hi. Hi, Martina. Oh, hi, Chloe. Hello, hello. Okay, it's, it's started then. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you here. Welcome back to the ADP List and Notion Original Series on Personal Productivity and Knowledge Management. I'm Ulkars, and I'm the Global Expansion Lead at ADP List, and I'm the, da uh, the director for this series as well. So just like the last session, let's get started by rating our own Notion skills. And if you would remember, as I said, this is to help us know where we are starting from where we are presently at and what's the benchmark that we want to set for us, right? So every session we keep on rating ourselves from one to five, where one is if we are just new to Notion and five is if we feel like a pro. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started. Let's give it a couple of minutes so that everyone can share the views. I love seeing all these numbers because I feel like it depends on the day of how I feel about my Notion skills. <laughs> it depends <laughs> yeah, on true. how much coffee I've had. <laughs> and I would say the motivating part here is in the initial sessions, I used to see a lot of ones here, but now I would say the average has started to shift a little above. And uh, it is kind of 2.5-ish, I would say. But yeah, still on the rise. That's amazing. Okay, then. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, we have started and we've done two amazing sessions till now. And today is going to be even better. For the third one, we have with us Sarah. And uh, Sarah is the founder and creative operations officer at Systems, a full service operations agency that offers fractional consulting services to streamline and scale small teams. She is the 10th certified Notion consultant in US and recently named the first certified paper form expert. When not working clients, Sarah's mission is to make business education affordable and accessible to all freelancers through a content and community. So please help me welcome Sarah on the stage and let's get started. Over to you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Good morning from Austin, Texas. Um, I've been watching the chat and just there are so many people from so many amazing places around the world. So I'm excited to kind of dive in today, talk about my journey in freelancing, how I got into Notion, and ultimately how time management has helped me not only launch my first business, but my second business, and now my third and fourth businesses, um, and really just talk about the ways that I use Notion to do that. Um, so without further ado, what I would love first, though, before we dive in, is let me know in the chat, are you a freelancer? Do you own a business? Are you still working a nine to five? Maybe you're thinking about becoming a freelancer. I would love to kind of know where you're at career rise right now. <clears throat> I love it, David. Freelancer and business owner. Yes, I love it. Okay, we're seeing a lot of freelancers. Okay, this is going to make my pitch so much better <laughs> because you never know. Sometimes, you know, there's people who are kind of on the fence. They haven't really pulled the plug yet. And so I really want to tap into how I got to where I am um, because if you are kind of starting out, I see some people saying, you know, I'm still working full time. I'm just now starting a business. So I always like to talk about my full, my full circle experience, if you will. So a little bit about me, I, like we've already mentioned, you know, I'm the owner and operator of Systems. I'm the first creative operations productized agency. Um, so I'm 100% productized. I've got three SKUs and I work with clients on a vast majority of things from building out Notion to defining what their entire tech stack is, what their processes look like, and then more of the higher level things, right? So I work with clients on helping them rearrange their org chart, depending, deciding, you know, who should we hire? Do we even need these roles on our team? So I do a lot of operations from the very, very back end all the way to customer facing. Um, I'm the one that handles all of my clients' feedback from their clients, their testimonials. I kind of act as a non biased third party um, for my clients who, you know, may not want to deal with that themselves. 
However, um, I didn't just get here overnight, right? Um, so I actually started my career. I did a program called AmeriCorps. Um, if you are US-based, you probably have heard of it. It's a 10-month government contract. I worked in STEM and robotics um, at 18, packed on my car, moved cross country to do this program. And it was vital to me and my experience to say, hey, like, the, this is how I can start exploring my skill set, what I'm interested in, and make time for things that were newer to me. And so one thing with that was content creation. So I would literally sit in between classes and my job and make videos about AmeriCorps on my YouTube channel. I would make videos about working at a nonprofit and what that was like. Because growing up, I thought if you worked at a nonprofit, like you just didn't make any money. I didn't realize that people were salaried and had, you know, this experience. And so I really wanted to start educating people on how to build their careers, right? Especially when college is not an option, um, which was not necessarily right away an option for me. So I did decide to go to college. Um, that was kind of, it, it was a weird time, right? Because if you're a millennial, you know, you know, we grew up in a time where it was like, you're only valid, you're only validated if you go to college. And so I decided to go stateside and I took seven classes a semester while working full time, while doing content. I don't recommend whatsoever, but it was really in that moment where I said, hey, like I have to figure out my working habits. I have to time manage so excruciatingly well to make this worthwhile for me. And then from there, um, I started freelancing. So I live in Austin, which is the tech capital of the US, I guess, kind of, you know, the new one. And um, I couldn't find a job working in the nonprofit space for almost 10 years and wearing so many hats and being able to juggle so many things so well simultaneously hindered me. Um, and so couldn't find a job, couldn't find a job. And so I uh, honestly started freelancing. I went to all of our partners and I said, hey, you don't have me on your team. Let me come film this. Let me come do a social media campaign. And in my first six months, I landed 40 clients and I went full time with my first business three days before my 25th birthday. So it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> it has been a very crazy whirlwind experience. Um, so my first business, I owned a design agency. So I do have that background just like I'll do. I did branding and websites and packaging and, and all of those things. But I started to recognize, you know, my clients were coming to me for a logo when really they needed processes. They needed a right brain bestie, as I like to joke, because they are left brain, right? They are the creatives. And so I started tapping back into, well, how can I help them process? Yes, Paula, San Francisco is still technically the capital of the world, but here in Austin, we're a little biased. So we're your sister city. It's fine. Um, but, you know, I started tapping back into those processes and said, you know, how can I serve my clients even better? And with that came a whole new level of client and time management, because for me, I had all of my regular clients, but I started picking up clients in completely new ways, such as Notion. Um, and so I did a couple Notion projects. And then in January of 2022, I became the 10th certified Notion consultant in the US, 40th in the world. And there are only currently 54 of us in the world, which is wild to me. And so I said, you know what? I love doing this more. I'm going to shut my design business down. And I went full time with it. And it has been amazing. Um, and then as of about a month ago, I became the first official paper form certified expert. Um, program's not officially launched yet, but it is coming out soon. And then obviously I do creative ops. Now, all that to be said, I'm an incredibly busy human and we all are, right? So these are just some of the things that take up my time that I need to manage and plan for. And so as we go through today, I want you to also be documenting kind of where you're at. What, what requires time from you? Is it, you know, do you have a partner? Are you trying to buy a house? Are you um, working on a book? Maybe with starting your business and you're still full time, you know, what does that look like? For me, when I started my, when I started freelancing, I worked my day job. I would get up and be in the office at 7 a.m. I worked until three and get home about 3.45, walk the dog, make dinner, 
hang out with my partner for maybe an hour. And then I literally would work till midnight, 1 a.m. almost every single night for that six months until I went full time. And it was exhausting, but I wanted to prioritize my future self, right? I knew that freelancing was something that was new and exciting and made me feel just like I did when I packed up at 18 and moved cross country by myself. There was this whole just like breath of life that breathed into my existence. And so I'm in that same place now, as I'm sure many of you are, where you're like, man, I want to do this. I want to do that. But where do I find the time to do that? Okay. So we're going to talk about all of that today. What I actually use for time management, some best practices that I put into place. Because as you can see here, being a busy human, there's only 24 hours in a day, right? So how do we make all of this actually happen? And we're going to talk about it. So some of the time management processes I'm sure you have heard of. So obviously, we all know about time tracking. If you are currently an employee somewhere, chances are you track your time. I absolutely, though, if you are freelancing, a thousand million percent, I cannot hone in on it enough, do not charge by the hour, okay? If you want to know more about that, I will help you on a different call. But time tracking is only helpful if you are trying to streamline and automate specific processes. It is not a productive way to say, hey, this is this is my time management. Especially if you are neurodivergent, um, these models that you see on the screen, I am neurodivergent, which is why I can speak on this. It is not useful to you. Okay. The same thing with the Pomodoro method. Um, so as you guys know, you know, you do these 25 minute bursts, you do a five minute break. I have never been able to successfully do the Pomodoro method. And specifically because with my ADHD, I have to have zero distractions until I'm ready to take a break. Um, I have found that if I'm in deep focus work and all of a sudden this annoying timer goes off on a different screen, that it's going to completely kill my vibe, right? And then what? I have to take a five-minute break and shift focus. So for me, Everything that I'm going to tell you guys about today, my processes and how I do time management, really maximizes your kind of capacity for deep focus work rather than putting you in a box like this. Because when you are constantly focus shifting, you're actually not productive. And so that was my biggest headache with the Pomodoro method was I was like, well, I'm like, I'm in this middle of this sentence or I'm in the middle of this code. And now I have all of a sudden I have to take a break. Like it just, it was such a hindrance to me that I could not, I couldn't get behind it. And, you know, I think that it works for some people. But again, if you, you know, have, so let me give you guys a little bit more clarity on that. So for me, when I get distracted, when I want to take a break, it literally, I am not exaggerating, guys. I'm not kidding. It takes me anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours to physically be able to sit back down and work if I get distracted. And so I am really specific on when I take breaks, the work that I do, and how I kind of maneuver that. Because if I, you know, am getting distracted halfway through a project that's due tomorrow, and then what it takes me three hours to get refocused, like, I have so much guilt with my time management with that. So all that to say, we can talk about Pomodoro all day, but I think it does work for some people, just not for me. The next thing is the get things done model. Um, so this emphasizes externalizing all of your thoughts, writing every single thing down. Now, I will say, I don't necessarily think that this is actually a time management tool. I think this is more of a prior prioritization tool. And I do actually use this. So I do what's called a need to do list and then a want to do list. And I think that that's a really big key here is prioritizing the needs to do's and then filling in your free time with the wants to do's or prioritizing it, which we'll talk about a specific block I do every single day um, that kind of, you know, makes me feel 
that no matter how busy I am, I can still make time for the wants to do's. Okay. Um, and I'm just checking the chat to make sure. And also too, guys, um, if I didn't say at the beginning, if you have questions throughout all of this, feel free to keep dropping them in the Q and a box. Um, cause we're going to have time for questions, um, as it goes or rather at the end. Okay. So my first time management practice is what is called micro ambition. So I actually found this practice. Somebody was giving, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm a horrible name person, y'all. Names are, I can remember dates and times and what I ate for breakfast six years ago. I cannot remember people's names, which is a very horrible habit that I have spent years trying to make better. However, I found micro ambition. There was a gentleman giving a keynote speech at a college graduation. I think he was actually like the Val Victorian. And um, he was talking about this practice of micro ambition. And this was at the time, I think I was maybe a sophomore in undergrad. And I was working full time. I was taking seven classes a semester. And I just was like, man, like, I just feel like I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Like, I. I feel like I'm always doing reactionary work. I'm not progressing. I don't have room to breathe. And so when I found this practice, a lot of all of the feelings that I had really subsided and became non-realistic to me. So microambition is basically this practice that you only write down three tasks per day and you start with the most important one on that list. And you do it until it is done the best possible amount that you can do. Or let's say you hit a roadblock, right? And you have to stop. But the idea is that you are doing the best absolute work you can rather than this kind of rushing to check things off your to-do list, which is what I feel like um, the Pomodoro method kind of forces you into, right? It's like the, you just got to get them done, get them done, get them done. But for me, I'm in a place in my business career that quality is so much more important than quantity. And so if it takes me three extra days to get a client project done, then it does, but at least it's the best that it possibly can. So every single day I sit down in the morning over my coffee over my coffee. And I literally write down what are my three main priorities for the day. And that is all I focus on. Now, that's not to say when those are done that I can't do other things. Okay. So again, we're going to go to this kind of do whatever you want block um, in a little while. But this micro ambition practice, honestly, is the best time management I have ever had, I've ever experienced. And I've been doing micro ambition for, God, I'm going to age myself for a minute, at least 10 years now I've been doing micro ambition. And with this practice, I've launched, officially launched and managed two businesses. I have done content. I have content subscriptions. I mentor people. I read a book a week. Um, you know, I'm able to get what I want done, right? So the next practice is daily themes. Now, this kind of can be, I don't want to say controversial, but I feel like daily themes often gets misinterpreted with time blocking. And this specifically goes back to this idea of constantly shifting focus and that actually ruining your productivity. So with the daily themes, basically what I do is I clump every day into a specific theme. So for me, I only do client work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which leaves Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays. Excuse me. Let me grab some water really fast. I'm, I'm a talker, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, let me take a breath. Okay. So what I do, like I mentioned, is I do client work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That means Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays are completely open to whatever I want to work on, whether that's taking sales calls, doing admin work. Um, right now, specifically, um, just a little shameless plug, I don't do Black Friday. I do an event called 12 Days of Giveaways, which you can sign up on my website, which is down in the bottom right corner. Um, so 12 Days of Giveaways is basically literally what it says. It's 12 days of giveaways that I launch uh, mid-December right up until Christmas. And every single day I give away templates. I give like crazy insane discounts. 
This year, um, Paperform and Tella are giving full one-year free subscriptions away. Um, and so like that is something that I'm working on today, Thursdays, Mondays. I'm building that out. I'm working on new offers. Um, and so this allows me on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, very specifically, I do not take any calls unless a client needs to meet with me. I will do that on Wednesdays. Um, but that allows me to literally completely 100% unplug and get all of the work done that I need. And then from there, time management comes into play, right? So we already have this distraction-free work day, but then we use our micro ambition to kind of break that down. And then further, I have a practice called AMPM blocks. Now, this, again, honestly ties back to my neurodivergency um, and just who I am as an individual. So AMPM blocks really is the idea that you are paying attention to when your energy peaks are. So for me, because my entire career, you know, before I went freelance, I had to be at the office at 7 a.m. You think about high school. I was in marching band. I had to be at, at the band field at 7.30 every morning. And so for me, I am naturally an early riser. I've kind of started sleeping in just like a little bit extra than I would prefer, but I am way more productive first thing in the morning than I am at three o'clock in the afternoon. And so for a very long time, I'm I'm curious like who's here that has either recently shifted from a nine to five or maybe you've been out for about a year, but you have it ingrained in you that you have to be available and you have to work between nine to five. And that's just not true. It's not real. It's all arbitrary. And so if you are way more productive at seven in the morning than you are at two in the afternoon, why force yourself to have another cup of coffee and just do the work in the morning, right? So kind of what my days look like is I start my day about 7.30, 8 a.m., and then I go distraction-free, and I work nonstop until usually like 11.30 noon, um, and that's my hard break. And I have a true two-and-a-half-hour, I call it my daily siesta, every single day because I know like that intense focus block in the morning, I need to I need to go watch TikTok. I need to go for a walk, do whatever I need to do and just, um, you know, just like break it down a little bit, right? Relax my brain. So that way my second block in the afternoon, I'm actually ready to go and I feel good rather than forcing like working a straight eight hour day. Now, the other thing I do want to mention is I also in a very hard, <laughs> disgusting way, I am incredibly productive at nine o'clock at night. Um, I don't know why, but I get these bursts of creativity and energy. And so honestly, I work from 9 p.m. to like midnight every night, whether it's like doing things on my phone and looking at content or like I'm doing some some updates to my content subscription. So like last night I sat and was, you know, like redoing all of my graphic art, you know, blog covers, right? Like it's not crazy intense. I can lay in bed with my laptop, but I'm looking at those energy peaks and saying, okay, I'm going to tap into that instead of kind of, you know, yeah, decompress. Thank you, Sarah. My brain. <laughs> I've not had, I've not even finished my first coffee this morning. It's a little early for me. Um, but I do not force when I don't have the energy to work. And that also includes why I do three days of admin creative work each week um, and only force clients into two days. Because if I have super heavy client projects, I don't want to spread that out and be exhausted every single day. I would rather have only two long days a week and then be able to you know, sit and watch a show or a movie or go to bed early and not feel exhausted or guilty that I'm taking the me time, right? All right. <clears throat> so what does all of this look like in Notion? That's a great question. And it's, I think I'm a little controversial when it comes to how I build in Notion. Um, so we'll talk about it here in a second. But I'm curious, let me know in the chat, um, where do you do your time management? Are you using Notion? Do you use your Google Calendar? Where are you currently tracking your time or tracking your tasks in terms of what you do every day. And if you don't have a process, let me know too. 
Cool. Okay. Notion, Google, paper. I'm a paper girly man. Okay. Uh, ooh, I haven't heard of reclaimed AI. Interesting. Notion, trying to use Notion, paper, Google Calendar. Okay. Awesome. Paper bullet journal. Okay. Listen, I tried the bullet journal thing at the beginning of COVID. It was a nightmare. I give people so much. Like if you can do physical art, I'm very jealous of you. I am not a girl who's creative with her hands at all. Um, Clockify, paper calendar, online calendar, post-it notes. Okay, perfect. So I am in the middle of all of y'all. <laughs> um, so I actually have an assistant on my team who manages my weekly planner, which this is a cleaned up kind of mock of what it looks like. Um, so they go in, they look at all of my client notes every week. They look at our client meetings and they say, hey, you need to prioritize this this week. Hey, you've got a call with so-and-so this week. Um, hey, this email has been sitting in your inbox. You need to prioritize it, right? And so how we have ours broken down is we use toggles. I am a toggle girly. Listen, toggles are my favorite Notion feature out of everything because I love grouping information together and making it super clear and concise and to be able to kind of hide away so it's not distracting. And so when I, again, think about my focus shifting and maximizing my time, the less distractions and the simpler system I can have, the 20 million times better productive I am, okay? I have so many friends that have built second brains and that are leaders in the productivity space. And all of those templates and workspaces are just far too complex for me. Um, I also am not, feel free to quote me, I don't care. Um, I don't believe in like saving tasks. Like if it's done, it's done. It's gone from my mind and that's it. Like there's no reason that I need to sit here and have documented tasks from three years ago or six months ago. Like I just don't. Um, what's more important to me is the legality of client projects and things that I'm doing. So keeping that proposal, keeping that contract, keeping that invoice receipt, making sure that email chains are saved, right? But on a day-to-day, -day, I don't need to know what on September 17th I did at 10 a.m. I just don't care, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, and that's just how, how my brain works. Um, so how we have it broken down is we use toggles for every single day of the week. So we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you can see on here, Monday, it literally says one-off projects admin. So all I should be doing on this day is answering emails, taking sales calls. Um, I also go live on my YouTube channel every Monday at noon. So those are the things that I'm doing on those days. And then on Tuesdays, I toggle down for my clients. So those, the, and again, this is a mock-up, but like where it says client A, that's actually a backlink to their client portal. So I can easily just click in and send them a note or do what I need to do. Um, but that's it. That's all we do, guys. And my, <laughs> yeah, Elon, emailing Elon Musk is a fake task, guys. It's not real. But I was like, I need to show you something. Um, but yeah, and even like, so my assistant uses this exact same planner. She has the exact same thing literally right below mine. So we can also cross tasks, um, cross share tasks. So a great example is that for two years now, I am not lying. I'm not kidding. I have been dying to clean out my Canva account. It is not something that is on my need to do. It is on my want to do. And after so long of putting it off and every time I go into Canva, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to see these projects anymore. Like these things are like six years old. I just, I don't, or like, oh my God, that was a terrible client. Like I don't want to be reminded of like the trauma and the drama. And so I need to clean this out. And so I've had that on my want to do, which again is another little toggle. I just keep a list going on, um, down below and I will literally just move it into her to do's and say, hey, when you want to prioritize this, go for it. But like, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, so that's how we work. And then we have a little note space and that's it. I don't, I don't even have like note databases anymore. Um, so 
it's kind of wild um, because I build that stuff out for clients. But for me and my own productivity, the less clicking that I need to do, the better. And it's so interesting. I want to tell you guys a story. So I work a conference called Bid Summit. Um, it is for YouTube creators to learn from other YouTube creators. Mr. Beast is a co-owner and he always does the keynote. And so this year I was doing volunteer management and uh, Mr. Beast's team came to me and said, hey, someone needs to clean out his refrigerator and reorganize it. And in my mind, I'm going, why? That's like the weirdest, dumbest request. I'm also not on your team. Like, I don't work for you. Anyway, so their reasoning was the, the more he has to make decisions about where to put his hands and how to find the food he's looking for takes away from his decision making and the ability to be creative and do these things if he's trying to make decisions on things that aren't important. And at the time, this is like two months ago, at the time I'm going, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But then I started looking at my own to-do list and my own workspace. And I literally do the same thing just digitally. It's like, how do I reduce the amount of decisions, the amount of clicks that I need to make? So when it comes to my, my, own, my own time, I'm not spending 5, 10, 15 minutes trying to navigate something, look for something, click for something, I can literally just come in here, one click, and I'm done, and that's it. Um, so definitely definitely a lot to, to digest there. But what I do to do that is I implement audits, okay? So if you are sitting here going, man, like I just, I feel like I waste an hour and a half every Monday trying to get all my notes together, trying to figure out what I'm going to work on and how, I want you to start implementing an audit and really look at what can be automated in your process, what can be templatized, and what is important to you right now. So on a personal level, one thing that really just kills my time, <laughs> it just kills my time, is going to the grocery store. And I... We also, I should say, the the area of Austin we live in is like crazy congested. They're doing all of this construction. And so it takes a good five, 10 minutes to even get out of our area and into the main road to like head to the grocery store, which is still 10 minutes away. And so for me, I started saying, hey, I need my time back. I cannot spend two hours every single week battling the grocery store, battling traffic, battling, you know, all of these decisions. And so, yeah, Claudia said that she's using HelloFresh. So if you are Texas-based, you know all about HEB. And their app is insane to me. I can build grocery lists. I can order groceries. They get delivered to my house. And so what I started doing is building our grocery list throughout the week. I have the app on my phone. As I'm walking the dog, I'm going, oh, I need dishwasher soap. I order it on the, or I put it into the checkout on the app. Oh, I want to do, I don't know. I want to make pasta tonight and I don't have any tomatoes to make tomato sauce. Add it to the list, right? And so with that, I have cut down significant time. Um, I also have a um, pretty extensive Notion database, actually. I did a video on this not too long ago that when I pin a recipe on Pinterest, it automatically gets added to a recipe um, book in my Notion account. And I have a formula written that it auto suggests recipes for me that I haven't cooked or that I haven't cooked. Um, I think it's like 45 days or more. And so I've even cut down on decision making on what should we eat for dinner. Um, and we do a little bit of meal prep that obviously saves time, but grocery delivery has changed my life. Um, another thing that I recently audited that kind of has broken my heart a little bit, but I realized it was taking up hours, like hours a month is what I call just because calls. People who want to pick your brain, people who just want to get coffee and catch up, people who, you know, are kind of thinking they want to hire you, but aren't really sure and they're shopping around. I don't do just because calls anymore. There are so many tools out there to send voice notes and connect with people without having to physically sit here 
on a call for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, and that cuts into my productivity. Um, the next thing is starter templates. So another audit that I did when it comes to client work is how often I was literally building the exact same templates for my clients. And so I actually ended up building two foundational template bundles that are internal to me. I don't sell them publicly, but they are what I call my starting point for all of my clients. Every client gets a wiki. Every client gets a CRM. Every client gets a client portal and a lead tracker. And then I take that and I just customize those to what my client needs and I can build extras. But I was literally spending at least five to 10 hours on every single client building the exact same templates out. And similarly with that is my pre-recorded training materials. So every workspace, team space that I build gets its own dedicated training video. Plus I do an overview video of the entire account plus Notion basics, right? Because so many clients come to me and they're like, hey, I've never used Notion, but I want to spend $12,000 with you and have you build it out, right? Totally fine. I'll take your money, but I have to produce the educational content. And so now I don't do any of those videos. I built a mock workspace that I did all pre-recorded trainings in. And I let people know like, hey, this is a, this is a templatized training. When you go into your account, it's going to look a little bit different, but these are the foundational items that you need. Um, additionally, I have a hard 5 p.m. stop for dinner. Um, like I mentioned, I do work at 9 p.m. again every night, but dinner is incredibly important to me. That is my time to decompress. I love to cook. I I love it. I hate grocery shopping, but I love to cook. Um, and so for me, stopping at 5 p.m. and being able to say, okay, you know, this is this is my time. I'm going to turn on Jeopardy. I'm going to listen to a podcast, zone out, cut some garlic, cut some onions, and just be with myself for the day. That's really important. Um, now, the last thing is how much time I was spending on email. And this is going to be incredibly controversial, I feel like, for some people. Um, I do not check my email on my computer at all. Um, I don't even, I'm not even like, logged in. Um, I am, but like, I don't have it as a tab because, you know, you have like the single sign on, right? You have to be logged into Google, but I do not check my email on my computer because it takes up so much time. And so, and I have multiple inboxes. I have several email accounts and it just, it takes a while. So for me, it's easier in the app to have all of my inboxes logged in be in the all inbox tab and just go one by one for all of my accounts. And so I only check my email when I'm out walking my dog and it works excruciatingly well for me. Um, so definitely, definitely some interesting things to think about as you are looking at your time management to say, hey, this is this isn't working for me or this needs to be a little bit better. Where can I make more time for the things I actually want to do and remove all of the time sucking activities that I don't like doing or that just aren't challenging you, right? So what I want to do before we open it up for Q&A, wow, I have never been on time, guys. This could not have been better. So for the next five minutes, what I would like you to do is map out your dream week. What does that look like for you? Does it give you more time to work on a novel you're writing? Does it give you more time to spend with your partner or your family or take a vacation. Um, maybe you want to finally take vacation as a freelancer. That is a hard, hard um, rule for me. I take seven weeks a year. I live for my vacation time. Um, but also what distractions and working habits are preventing you from getting there? Is it the type of work you're doing? Is it that you've never experimented with automating your processes. So what I want you to do is map all of that out just, just broadly. Just think about this week. It's Friday. It's all fresh. Think about what you did this week and where your time sucks were. And then next week, I want you to try and make that a reality. Um, if you can't do it next week because you probably already have commitments, do it the following week. But give yourself a week of exploration to really live out what a dream week could look like. And then you can backtrack from there and start making it a reality by implementing those changes on a more permanent basis. 
So go ahead. And if you feel like sharing, I would love to see it if you want to put it in the chat. Um, but also once you're done, we're going to open it up for Q&A at the end. So in about five minutes, I'm going to start taking questions. So feel free to drop them in the box as well. Yeah, walking, Cynthia, is a great way to clear the mind. I walk, I have a walking pad here in my office that I don't walk on as much as I wish I did anymore, but the weather's just been so nice here, so I'm like finally like, okay, I can go outside. It's not 200 degrees, um, but yeah, I walk by myself about three miles a day, and then with the dog, we do about two, so it's, it's great. I love it. Um, I also tend to listen to really angry music. Uh, what is the, it's called divorced dad music. So it's like Creed and Breaking Benjamin. And I listen to a lot of like the louder stuff, just to like drown out the business thoughts because I feel like I, all I do is think about my business. That's all we do as business owners. And so I specifically listen to music that makes me not be able to think about my business. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to go through the chat too while we're talking. Um, yeah, Sprouts is great. I love Sprouts. Their produce is so good, um, but they're really far from me. They don't do delivery. Um, and it's just like a good 25 minute drive. So it's, uh, it's rough. Um, okay. Let me go back to that. Okay. More time for sleep. Yes, Lucy. Oh my God. I value my sleep like nobody's business. I will actually say I started taking, um, I don't know if y'all have heard of the company Alice Mushrooms. Um, it's a mushroom company, but they're legal. It's like lion's mane, um, but it comes in chocolates. And so they actually have a sleep version, a sleep mushroom that has zinc and magnesium and just like minerals to help you actually like fall asleep and, you know, revitalize. And I have been sleeping like an absolute baby since I started taking them. Um, they also have a brainstorm one that I take every now and again, but it doesn't do what coffee does, you know? Um, okay. Read a physical book. I love that. I, um, I'm assuming, yeah, okay, you're in Fort Knox. Um, I use the Libby app. And so I rent books from the library and, I've been really getting into audiobooks lately because physical books, I just I fall asleep when I hold a book. Um, so I need I need to be able to be moving and and rocking and rolling. Um, be able to complete my hardest tasks and not getting distraction by the millions of less important ones. I love that. Brian, if you have um heard of Rad Reads and K He, he has a practice that he calls the 10K method. I think. And his whole process is about how to put your work into doing more of the 10K work versus like the $1 work. So if you haven't read up on, learned about Kehi and Rad Reads, I would definitely look into that. Um, take a walk in the afternoon. I love it. Your tasks are boring. Okay. Well, maybe we need to, we need to shift a little bit on the type of work you're doing. Um, love audiobooks. Yeah, me too. I actually just finished an audiobook that for the first time ever had background noise in it. So when they were explaining being in a thunderstorm, you could hear a thunderstorm playing and it drastically changed my experience with an audiobook. And it it's like, why are why are other audiobooks not doing this? Like it was such an experience that I'm kind of sad that not all audiobooks do it, right? Like how do I find audiobooks that have background sound? It just, it was incredible. Um, <laughs> thank you. Makes me want to add talking to Sarah to my weekly list. Yeah. Come hang out in my live stream. I am there every Monday at noon. Um, Spotify includes 15 hours of audiobooks. Yes. But Libby, Libby's the best for sure. Um, amazing. I have three projects and I struggle to prioritize. Okay. So maybe Vernice, I hope I said your name right. Uh, Veronice, I think it's Veronice. Um, I definitely would say, you know, are the projects the exact same? Are they, is one considered more important than the other? Or do you just not like the work? If you're struggling to prioritize, maybe it's the actual deliverables 
that is an issue. Um, or also too, actually, another thing to that is, and this is like a whole piece of time management that we didn't get into today, but I have a practice that I call annual mapping. And it's a free workshop on my YouTube channel. It's like 35 minutes maybe. And I teach you literally how to not only plan your availability for projects, but how to overlap deliverables to prevent burnout. Um, it's a free workshop, like I said, and it comes with like a Notion template and stuff. So I would definitely think about that too. Like, is it hard to prioritize because you have the exact same stuff due all the time and you're struggling to be like, oh, who, who deserves my attention when? So definitely check that out too. Um, you want a to do list and want to stop waiting till the next week before. Interesting. Okay, Ashley, she said, I have a business mentor I meet with once a month and I'm given a to do list and I want to stop waiting until the week before. I'm curious why you wait. I would definitely look at doing an audit on that. Of is it, are, are you being given tasks that you that are going to make your business better and maybe you can't see the reward right now? Or is it stuff that maybe you don't understand why you have to do and you're just doing it because they're telling you to do it? So I would definitely look at an audit for that, but also maybe the to-do list too. How can you integrate it to stuff you're already doing? Is there a way, I mean, obviously I don't know what's on that list, but I wonder if there's a way that you could kind of, you know, kill two birds with one stone and knock stuff out together um, to make it, to make it better. Okay, guys, I'm going to open it up for Q&A. Um, so um, let's take, what about multitasking people? How could you manage it? Um, multitasking people. I don't, I guess, David, I don't, do you mean like people on my team? Like how do I manage people that multitask? I don't personally believe that multitasking is productive at whatsoever. I don't think that, but again, it's just how my working mind is, right? So I know for a fact I cannot multitask. Um, I can kind of group things. Like I think about like when I clean my house, right? When I'm like cleaning up and I'm in the kitchen and there's something that goes in the laundry room, but there's also something like 10 feet away that also goes in the laundry room. That to me is multitasking, grabbing both and going there. But when it comes to like deep focus work, I don't think you should be multitasking whatsoever. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, will I share the slide deck? Yes, we will be sharing that. And I believe a, um, I believe the recording after this, I believe so. Um, okay. So, uh, Aaron asked on your workspace, how did you format the text that says meetings and to do's? So those, <laughs> <laughs> so those are actually single cell simple tables. And it's just, I click on the toggle that says like, um, oh God, what is it? I'm a terrible notion expert. Um, it's like feature, it's like the the primary column thing that just like automatically highlights it. That's all this is, is it's a simple table. But as you guys know, like in simple tables, you can't actually use notion command block features like the to do like the to do block um check off box you can't do toggles and so i like having the two columns here and then being able to physically check them off or turn something into a toggle if i need to so yeah that's how i did that <laughs> i'm a hacker man i'm just like i for me i it's got to look the way i need it to look or i won't use it um what are some scenarios where you feel like you need to change your theme days? So a great example is things like this that are coming up, right? If I have an event, um, you know, like I am on, I am on a, uh, I'm part of the solar solo creator summit in December, which falls, I believe it's a Tuesday or Wednesday. And so for me, what I would do that week is basically shift my client work instead of it, my admin day being Thursday, it'll, or instead of it being Wednesday, it'll be Thursday. So I like having that flexibility um, to be able to just like shift because when I'm a part of events, like I have no control over when that event is. Right. So that's, that's a big reason too, why I have three admin days is because if stuff comes up, I can, I can maneuver pretty easily. Um, and the other thing I should mention about clients is because I do a 90 day roadmap with them, I do a bi-weekly check-in with my clients. And so if I have to switch a day, they're not expecting me to work on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. They're not waiting to hear from me on those days. Um, 
So if I have to switch something, it's not that big of a deal. Um, Ashley asked, what was the name of the 10K read author's name? So his name is Kay He. Um, I will put it in the chat, the actual chat box. Um, so it's K He Rad Reads. Um, and you could do like the 10, I think it's the 10K model. Um, if you just type that in and into Google, it'll come up. Um, can we use your template for to-do list in Notion? You can totally screenshot this and build it yourself. Um, I do not have this as like a public template though. Um, and I, I don't really release templates guys. Like I do, but in my content subscription. So I think if you, if you go and find me in like the Notion template gallery, I have like two templates in there. Cause I just don't, I don't really make public templates. Um, oh, that's this is a great question. How do you tackle with phone distractions, specifically using social media in the workplace? Um, so my phone is on do not disturb all day unless I am out for a walk in my kind of three hour, you know, like just like break period, right? Um, my daily siesta, as I call it. Um, so I don't. I don't um, ever have like my phone going off. I also like my phone is here, but I keep it face down. So I also like the screen, the screen doesn't go off, all those things. Um, but I also too, like I genuinely enjoy my community online. And I think that's too why I've shifted into having like three days of admin work is because I love engaging. Like I hang out on Twitter every day, all day, pretty much, um, unless I really am focusing. But um, yeah, like I don't, I'm not like sitting and waiting for DMs or sitting and, you know, constantly engaging, but that's why I have that break like I do. And I just turn my phone off. Um, yes, we are going to share the slide deck. Um, on your workplace, how did you form? Oh, I think I already answered that. Um, okay. Um, okay. I always kind of feel like keeping my done task in my planner. Maybe I want to track my progress and use it for quarterly or yearly feedback. Don't you ever need them because you said you delete them once they're done. Okay. <laughs> I don't set goals. <laughs> um, I have never really set any goals in my business. Um, I am very naturally an analytical zero one kind of data person that if I am regularly seeing habits happen, I pivot. I'm not, I don't sit and hold out and say, okay, I set this goal. Like I have to achieve it. I have to work on it. Because for me, I think my superpower is is literally strategically pivoting. And so for us, it's like, yeah, we have an overall business financial goal every year. But in my mind, it's like, okay, I know I need four clients a month to get that. Cool. I have one client that hopped off. I got to go find another client. I'm really fortunate that the Notion directory being a consultant like always is shipping leads to me. So I don't even like I've never done sales goals. I've never done like, okay, I need to reach out to, you know, 10 people a day, cold marketing. Even when I had my design agency, I never did. I'm always referral. So I just don't, I don't do quarterly reviews. I don't do yearly reviews. I don't set goals. I just don't. Um, and I think I've done pretty well. So it's, you know, if we ever get to that point in the company that we need to, I'm going to hire somebody for that because my brain just doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh, so this is a great question from Sherry. Can you make the weekly planner reoccur every week automatically? Yes. So one thing I didn't mention, this is one single page in Notion. It is not in a database. It does not live in, yeah, in a database. It's not reoccurring every week, but you could. Um, so if you go into a database and you set up your template, you can click the three dots um, to edit it and click um, uh, schedule or reoccur. And then you can just have it set up to do every Monday at, um, you know, midnight, right, of that day. So you definitely can do that if you wanted to start a new planner every single week. We just don't because um, it doesn't work for us. So um, okay. Does it happen with, uh, with you too, that some days are so emotionally heavy and you're just drained. So you rest your whole day or days a hundred million thousand percent. Um, I am, I am the first person to tell you that I, it took me years to figure out what that looked like for me and to quote, 
give myself grace. Um, I've been in extensive therapy since I was a child. Um, I do what's called EMDR therapy, which is more for um, PTSD, trauma, childhood trauma. And that 50 minute session is so exhausting to me that I specifically schedule it at the end of my working day on a day that isn't super deep focus heavy. Because if I can't go into that session being the best that I can, I'm, what's the point of going to therapy, right? If I can't show up the way that I need to. But I also know by the end of it, I don't talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. And so that is a big um, reason to like why I schedule the things that I do the way that I do. Um, but I also have days where I just wake up and I'm like, man, I need a break. Like I just want to do fun stuff today. And as a freelancer, I think for a while, it, it took me a while to remember that it's okay to work when I want um, and do the things that I want. So, you know, there was a day last week where I was just like, man, I cannot get into this. Like, I don't know if I was tired or I just like wasn't feeling it. Right. And it's like, okay, go and watch TikTok, make a really good cup of coffee, enjoy. And when I, when you're ready, get in, right? I work from home. I can work at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 1 in the morning. It literally does not matter. So if it takes me five hours to start the day, it takes me five hours to start the day. And you just have to like accept that you will have days like that and you are your own boss and no one is going to get mad at you. <laughs> I think that was like my biggest thing of breaking away from the nine to five was like, oh my God, people are going to be so mad if I take a personal day. And it's like, who's going to know? Nobody. What is that? For, what is that? Um, that meme? Like they're going to know from TikTok. Uh, like no one's going to know. So that's it. Um, okay. Last question from Steve. Could you explain an admin day? Absolutely. So admin days for me are everything outside of client work. So it is, um, it is answering emails. It is, um, filming videos, live streaming, working on smaller internal projects. I'm working on kind of like a DIY offer to my agency, my productized model right now for just like lower ticket individuals. Um, so like the admin day is I'm building this new product. I, you know, Friday is like, I'm actually working on a new company um, with another Notion consultant. And um, like today, we're spending the whole afternoon building this new thing out, right? So the admin days are brainstorming and cleanup and just like progressing your business forward and working on the things that are going to set you, set me up for the long game, right? It's also like doing sales calls and reaching out to people or responding to people on my wait list to say, hey, like, you can work with me now. Like I have this availability in January. Like let's, let's talk about it. Um, so that's what admin days are. Um, they are days where usually I have to put myself together. Um, or I do calls like this. I do events like this. So yeah, I definitely recommend everyone should at least have one admin day a week that you are just straight working on your business instead of working in your business. And that's the last kind of time management thing I'm going to leave you guys with is when you're doing your, your dream week and your weekly audit, really think about how much time am I giving to my clients versus how many time, how much time am I giving to myself? And when you really pull back that curtain and you're unbiased with yourself and you're raw and real and you're like, Hey, like something needs to change, right? That's why I'm doing this audit that you're really looking at where, where do you want to set yourself up to be, right? If you're spending 30 hours a week just doing client work and working for them and working reactionary to the deliverables you're paying for, do you always want to be in that place? Or do you want to show up more as a leader, more as an expert, and start shifting into more of a strategic role, not a project's role, right? And so where can you think about where you're putting your time, whether it's professional development, whether it's, you know, reconfiguring your offers. Um, I'm hiring my first ever projects assistant. I've been working solo for five plus years now, and I'm finally hiring an assistant because I'm in that place where it's like, I, I can't do, I can't do the project stuff anymore. Like I just want to prioritize doing the best I can at strategy and leadership rather than the little items. So that's what I would leave you guys with. Um, 
thank you for coming. I know we're a minute over. You can connect with me on Twitter. Literally, that is where I hang out. It's really, honestly, my only social media. Um, my website is here, systems.club. And on there, I have this really great audit guide. It's for free. If you're in my navigation, it's under resources. Um, and this audit guide will help you look at your actual freelance processes to say, hey, this needs to be automated. This needs to be streamlined. This needs to be done manual. So you will get that. Um, it's a free download and it'll actually give you a version in Notion or Google Docs. So if you're not a Notion user or you're like kind of new to it, I know a lot of us said ones or twos at the very beginning of this call. Um, I have a Google Doc option for you. So Thank you guys for coming today. I really appreciate it. And of course, send me DMs. So if your question didn't get answered today and it's, it is like pressing, you have to have an answer, send me an email or send me a DM. I'm happy to chat anytime. Thanks a lot, Sarah. This was a yeah. great session and I would say you're a great storyteller. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us Thank you. Yeah. And uh, personally, I got to learn so, so much, much from this session and I'm sure all the learners would share the same feedback. And thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us today. See you at the same time next week on Monday, where Jason, aka Easto, will share his experiences and learnings about task and product management in Notion. Till then, connect with fellow learners in the networking launch and feel free to share your learnings on socials using hashtag ADPListXNotion. And you might even get featured on one of our official handles. Thanks again. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you on Monday next week. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Have a great weekend.